So today we're going to talk about how to get yourself out of tutorial hell, or better yet, how to just avoid it entirely. So let's have a look. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I guess a good place to start would be just with a definition. So basically what tutorial hell is, is basically when you just watch nothing but tutorials and don't actually do anything productive with that work. So I'm going to be using programming as an example just because that's my field of experience. But this is the case for anything. Say you want to get into woodworking or anything like that. Working with cars, for example. If you were to just watch a bunch of tutorials and then never actually practically apply those skills, that's pretty much what tutorial hell is. So the reason why this is a bad place to be in and just a bad mindset to actually learn new skills and new technologies is basically because the only way you're actually going to remember any of these skills is by actually applying them. So if we take programming for example, say you want to learn for example C Sharp. So there's a couple of ways you go about learning it. You could watch a bunch of tutorials and then after you finish them all, go and work on a project. But you'll find that when you do something like that, that a lot of that early stuff you'll probably have forgotten by the end. But the other way that you can approach it is by watching maybe like one or two tutorials and then going and applying those skills in a little project and then watch a couple more and apply those skills. And I think that's a much more effective way to apply not just written tutorials but also video tutorials because I do think that they actually hold a, I guess a very important place in teaching people new skills because I, I'm not one of those people who think you just have to learn it by yourself or you just have to learn it by reading the documentation. I do think that there is a lot of benefit from actually watching someone else apply those skills and then, I guess, taking that knowledge and building on it. Otherwise, I guess I wouldn't be doing this channel. So if we take an example from my past, when I went and first learned React, what I did is I watched a ton of videos and then when I actually went to go work on the project, at the time it was a project I was being paid for, I had forgotten a lot of the basic stuff, things like how JSX syntax works and things like that, which are just fundamental React skills. And what I remembered was more of the advanced stuff. But if you don't remember the absolute fundamentals, you're not going to get to the advanced stuff. So you, there's no point just having that knowledge memorized. So what ended up happening was that when I went and actually worked on that project, I always had the docs open. And even if you do understand a technology, there's nothing wrong with just always checking back with the docs. But I was constantly checking just for the most minor of syntax things that I just hadn't understood because I didn't take the effort to actually go and practice the skills. All I did was just watch a bunch of videos and then I guess think that somehow I'm just going to learn it without actually practically applying those skills. And that's not going to happen. No matter who you are, you're going to have to actually practice and practice and practice. Just watching someone else or just reading a book isn't going to actually ingrain those skills into your mind. If you, it doesn't have to be like a massive project. It could just be, say for JavaScript, for example. Let's just use that as an example. Say you want to learn how arrays work. If you do just a tiny project on just the fundamentals of arrays, and then once you finish that, you'll actually have a much deeper understanding of how that actually works than you would have if you had just watched, say, a 10 minute video or even just an hour long video of every single thing that an array does, because by the time you get to the end of it, you're not going to remember most of it. The only way you're going to remember stuff is by actually practicing it and I guess also applying it to different situations because that's also one of the things that you really don't get from just watching a tutorial. Sure you understand how maybe this one function works in this situation but you're not going to learn how to apply it to different situations. And being able to apply those skills to different parts of a project is an absolute fundamental skill for programming. And this is the case for other skills as well, but we'll stick with the programming example. So say with arrays, if you understand how arrays work in a basic context, then you can apply that knowledge to say, how do I fill out a list? Or how do I search through a, a list of say, usernames and select one of those out of it? Once you've understood how the fundamentals of an array works, then you can apply those skills to different situations and you can apply, I guess, abstractions to it in, say, the form of a user interface. So at this point, you might be wondering, how do I avoid getting myself stuck into this rut? So there's a couple of different ways you can go about doing it. 
Obviously, there's not going to be everything that I say here that is going to be the expansive list of what you can do, but this is typically what I do. So the first way is obviously to just not use tutorials. If all you're doing is reading the documentation, then you're not gonna get yourself stuck into a situation where you're just watching more and more videos on how to do something. You're just basically looking at what you need and that's all. So I don't think this is a useful way to learn everything, obviously. So if you're trying to learn, say, C Sharp or something like that, I don't think you're really gonna get anywhere by just reading the documentation. I think that initially it does actually help to have that fundamental, I guess, base that you can get from tutorials. And then after that, you can apply documentations for things like, I wanna learn how this library works. Pretty much once you've got that fundamental, then you can start actually using the documentation productively. The other place where just reading the documentation is just a useful way to go about learning something is with, say, shell programming or just general scripting, for example. Most of the time when you're using something like, I don't know, LS or HTOP or something like that, you're not going to really find tutorials on how to use these. So really your only bet in that situation is to just read the documentation. And I think that the only time documentation should be your absolute first go-to is when there is nothing else available. And the other way that you can go about avoiding this situation is by just, as I've mentioned earlier in the video, every time you watch a couple of videos, say you watch like one or two videos, say you, for example, you're learning Python and you go over, I don't know, lists and functions. Go do a very small project that will go over everything that you can do with lists and functions, apply them to different situations that show up in the tutorial and not just copy and pasting what you're seeing. Try to just break it and see what happens because a lot of knowledge actually does come from breaking something and then learning how to put it back together in a way that works and maybe in a way that improves it. When you do watch a tutorial, a lot of the time it's not going to be the absolute best way to write a bit of code and there may be other ways that you can do it that it might be slower, but might be more readable, for example. Say if your tutorial is just using a lot of ternary statements, they tend to be a little bit hard to read. So if you understand how that works, you can convert them into if else statements, for example. So I presume this to be the case with other skills as well, but with programming, for example, when you do learn more and more programming languages and more and more frameworks, you'll find that each new one you learn ends up being much easier to learn because you'll find a lot of core similarities between them. So for example, I've got a course right now where I'm doing iOS development and because it's iOS development, we're using Swift. And I've noticed that Swift is basically TypeScript with a bit of Python for good measure. And I've found it incredibly easy to learn because of that. So I really don't need to actually go and look at any of the documentation. And you'll find this to be the case a lot of the times. So when you learn a bunch of new programming languages, you'll find that there's a lot of core similarities between them. And you'll realize that you don't actually need to watch tutorials for that basic syntax. You can just save the tutorials for the more advanced stuff or the library specific stuff. So if you're doing something like video streaming, and you don't know how to use HLSJS, or you're doing, say you want to have a PDF reader in your web page and you don't know how to set that up with React, for example, then you can save the tutorial content for those more advanced situations and leave the basic syntax to just a brief skim over the documentation and just playing around with writing code. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So hopefully I don't seem more low energy than normal because I'm recording this at about 8.20 p.m. after doing my first, what was planned to be a 5K run and then turned into about a six and a half K run because I didn't plan out my route properly. And it's my first time doing that in a good six months. So I'm definitely feeling it in my legs, that's for sure. So hopefully it didn't come off too badly in the video and it was still enjoyable to watch. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you've got any ideas that you want me to cover, I'll be happy to address them. So if you want to get a notification when those videos come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and hopefully we'll get updates, but we can never actually trust YouTube to push updates to anyone. So go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. So if you want to see more videos like this, go check out the playlist that this video is in on that side. Yeah, that side. And you might find something else that you enjoy. So that's pretty much everything and I'm out.